Howard, I think most consumers aren't aware of the fact that recently the U.S. Supreme Court pretty much completely took away any way for consumers to hold generic drug manufacturers responsible. They did, and that's particularly important because 75% of drug sales in the United States are generic drugs. Uh, this came to a head in last month in the Bartlett decision in the U.S. Supreme Court. Karen Bartlett is a very nice lady who had shoulder pain. She went to the drugstore to buy a simple generic painkiller. As a result of that painkiller, clearly her life was destroyed. Her life's been described now as a living hell. She went to trial before a New Hampshire jury in federal court in New Hampshire applying New Hampshire state law. The jury awarded $21 million for her damages, which was really not a generous uh, award at all because she certainly, the future care she's going to require is going to take up most of that. Uh, that case then went to the uh, Supreme Court and it gave the Roberts Court the opportunity to finish what they started in the mincing decision, which is granting total immunity to generic drug manufacturers. Um, in continuing their customary disdain for the American jury, the Roberts Court, the Roberts majority, uh, overturned the jury award and held that the New Hampshire law was preempted by an FDA rule. And those FDA rules are almost saying that there are no rules. And that's what's so ironic about them turning it back over saying the FDA rules are going to trump because as we've seen a great new public citizen report came out recently, there really aren't that many rules and regulations that are put in place that apply to generic drug manufacturers. No, they, they pretty much get a free reign. The pharmaceutical industry has been trying to buy a free reign uh, in Washington and so far they've done a very good job. The, there are three major consequences of this Bartlett decision. The first is ge generic drug manufacturers have virtual immunity. But in doing so, in acquiring immunity, they also have no incentives to take unsafe drugs off the market or to issue warnings about unsafe drugs that might hinder their sales. The second consequence is that citizens, such as Karen Bartlett, are left without a remedy. But the third major and biggest of these three uh, consequences is that there's now a major safety gap in generic drug use. G generic drugs are dangerous. And as you said, the public citizen identified over a period of January 2008 to March 2013, they identified 53 different drugs that had to be black boxed. They had to have a black box warning issued after they became generic. So the fact that they've been on the market for a long time as brand name drugs doesn't mean that they're all the wrinkles have, got, have gone out or all the problems have been identified. Generic drugs are dangerous.